20 years ago tomorrow, one of the biggest corporate scandals in American history took off. Enron filed for bankruptcy December the 2nd, 2001. It had ranked seventh on the Fortune 500 just a few months earlier. 20,000 people ultimately lost their jobs. Many lost their retirement savings. Investors worldwide lost confidence. And several top executives would go to prison, including the former CEO Jeff Skilling and the former chief financial officer Andrew Fastow. The politically connected chairman Ken Lay also found guilty on multiple counts of fraud. But he died before he could appeal, so his convictions were wiped out. If you think you know all there is to know about the Enron fiasco, hear from CNBC's Scott Cohn. He covered the Enron saga for this network 20 years ago and is back in Houston tonight. Hi, Scott. Hi, Shep. Uh, there it is, the famous glass tower of Enron. Used to have the crooked E logo street side. It does still stand. The oil company Chevron has offices here these days. But Enron left behind more than just an office building and a financial disaster. Some of the things that we take for granted today trace their roots right there to 1400 Smith Street. Mr. Jenkins, it must be evening there. Thank you. 20 years before Zooming was a thing, this Enron promotional video was touting video conferencing on the Internet and streaming video years before Netflix. Enron Communications is changing how the world communicates. We're changing the industry. We're changing. Scott Yeager was head of strategy for the division that became Enron Broadband. We spoke on Zoom. We were the only ones focused on broadband experiences, and broadband did include streaming media and did include the interactive dynamic you know, meetings like this. Before that, Enron created the modern day markets for natural gas and electricity, setting the course for how energy is priced to this day. Energy markets expert Ed Hurst, who worked with prosecutors to build their cases against company executives, concedes that Enron was a pioneer. Did Enron revolutionize trading for natural gas and electricity? Without question. Brought liquidity, brought benefits to consumers and producers. Which is why when Enron went bankrupt, throwing thousands out of work in a matter of hours, many mourned more than just a job. Ravi Katuria was a director in Enron's retail energy division. Everyone inside the company acted almost like an entrepreneur. You know, you're an internal entrepreneur and you were responsible for your destiny. High pressure, but worth it, says Stephen Webster. He traveled the world as a young executive in the international division. I would tell you it was probably one of the best jobs I ever had. But Leslie Caldwell, the first head of the Justice Department's Enron Task Force, says none of that means Enron was not a fraud. The people who worked at Enron, there were tens of thousands of them, that many of them, probably almost all of them, were honest, hardworking people trying to do the right thing. But the problem was they had a cult culture at the top that was not was not that way. There was a lot, though, that also came out of that culture that still exists today. How should we look at that, the things that they did that that we're literally pioneering. I'm not saying that they didn't have any good ideas or do anything, but they, they, they tried to monetize things before they were really ready. Caldwell, who today is a criminal defense attorney, says when the innovations didn't pay off, uh, people crossed the line and tried to make it look like they did. 21 people were convicted or pleaded guilty to all manner of financial crimes uh, from a, by a team of prosecutors that cut its teeth going after the mob. And that kind of aggressive prosecution of business executives, Caldwell says, is another innovation, better or worse, that we can trace to the Enron scandal. Tomorrow night on the actual 20th anniversary of Enron's bankruptcy, the key players. Where are they now? We will catch up with many of them. Shep?